So I'd like to take a few minutes, if I may, um, to talk about worship. I was I was thinking about it yesterday, and this this concept of what worship really is. And, and you hear people say, "Well, come to my church because the worship is amazing. I enjoyed the worship. Uh, the worship leader, the worship." band, the worship service, whatever it might be, and and I think we've we've given ourselves the wrong idea of what worship really is. We we express our enjoyment of worship as if the worship was for us. You know, worship I enjoyed worship because it made me feel good. I enjoyed it because I got goosebumps or I enjoyed the music and really we turn worship into this thing where we say it's for God but then we're the ones we're the ones getting the everything out of it and and I think that really defeats the purpose of of what worship really is you know the Bible says that that offer yourselves your your entire being as a living sacrifice this is, in some translations say this is your reasonable service or this is your spiritual act of worship. But in, in the Old Testament, when, when they would make sacrifices to idols, that was, that was their worship. They were, they were sacrificing something to their idol. And even, even to God in the Old Testament, they were making sin sacrifices. They were making sacrifices with with their first fruits or with their animals or with their grains or whatever and and really that was that was supposed to be an act of worship but but when when Jesus came and he paid the price then the 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 elements of that particular law were were diminished and obsolete because Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice so in doing so we are no longer required to make sacrifices of animals and, and whatnot. But scripture says to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Now now what is what does that mean? How do we worship God in such a way where we offer ourselves a living sacrifice? When when the Old Testament people would give up something, they would sacrifice something, it always had to be the best of what they had. Okay, remember Cain and Abel Cain was, was jealous and envious because Abel's offering was superior, uh, more desirable than Cain. So Cain got upset and ended up murdering his brother. So sacrifice needs to be something of value, something of importance. So if we offer ourselves a living sacrifice in worship to God, we're basically saying, I'm giving everything that I have, I'm, I'm releasing my self-reliance, I'm releasing my self-righteousness, I'm releasing my, my self-dictated importance, if you will, in an effort to worship God and, and kind of trade out, okay? I think, of, I think of Abraham and Isaac in the Old Testament where Abraham was told to sacrifice his son and and it wasn't because God didn't didn't know Abraham's heart but he really I think it really was a way for Abraham to almost see himself to where his his value was to where his worship was Excuse me. so you know, Abraham believed God's promise even in the midst of the confusing concept of, okay, I've promised you a son who will be the father of many nations, this and that. So, you no, know, Abraham in his humanity, I would imagine, would have asked, okay, if if I'm if, if this is supposed to be the promised son to me, then how in the world is it going to happen to where I have to sacrifice. Well, Abraham believed God. He said, "I believe." Basically, he believed that 
God could fulfill his promise to Abraham, even in spite of Abraham having to sacrifice his son. Now, of course, we know that that when, when Abraham had lifted the knife in order to sacrifice uh, Isaac on the altar, the, there was a ram caught in the thicket and then provided a sacrifice in substitute for the sacrifice of his son. Now, this is a, a picture of Christ and his sacrifice. So, the ram, Jesus Christ was the ram, if you will, to substitute the, the sacrifices or the punishments that we all would have would have had to go through. So, this idea of worship and and offering ourselves up as a living sacrifice is, is I'm I'm setting myself upon the altar of God, so He can do whatever it is He wants to do with me and through me. So this. Worship is is glorifying God in that whatever I let God do in and through me is is more important, is more valuable, is more precious than what I could ever do in and through myself. Okay, this idea that we go to a worship service as if you could separate worship into categories or in the time frames where there's the worship service and then there's the message or then there's the, the sermon or then there's there's is broken up as if worship service only happens from 10 to 10:30 okay it's not just the music but this idea that we can be a living sacrifice it is a sacrifice of worship that does not cease it's a it's a living sacrifice it's continuous it's it goes on. It, 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 it just it plays out every moment of every day as we live. And not only are we offering a sacrifice that's alive, but we're, at, we're sacrificing uh, a life that is living, that is, that is moving forward. And in this moving forward, we honor God, we approach God, we seek God, we, we abide in Christ, we... we keep his commandments and 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 we we get away from ourselves this self-denial this this removing of the idea of self-reliance i can i can do this myself now the the old testament sacrifices were just a picture so we take ourselves which whether we admit it or not, ourselves are the most valuable possession we valuable possession we have. So offering up as a living sacrifice is essentially saying, Lord God, I'm I'm offering the value I put on myself in exchange for the value that I put on you. Christ and is 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 so much more than we are by ourselves. Apart from Christ, I can do nothing. Apart from my uh, apart from Christ, I can accomplish no good thing. So by worshiping God, I'm not just singing a song. While singing a song could be in worship, but it's not strictly worship. I don't worship God through prayer. Uh, ex exclusively, but prayer is in worship. I don't worship God just by preaching, although preaching is in worship. I don't worship God in in giving of of time and generosity and, and money and those kinds of things. Yet those things are in worship. I worship Christ the moment I wake. Okay, on on His precepts I meditate day and night on his law I, I delight and he gives me the desires of my heart these kinds of things are worship worship is an ongoing thing the Bible says pray without ceasing and yet you don't find yourself on your knees 24 7 praying a prayer yet praying without ceasing is in a sense constant um, uh, a 
acknowledgement of the presence of God in your life to where you can have an ongoing conversation or, or an ongoing affiliation, if you will, but it doesn't always have to be a back and forth di a dialogue. Worship is the same thing. If we acknowledge that we are nothing without Christ and that we can live our lives in a way where we want to honor Him in everything we do, we seek to glorify God in everything, everything, you know, it's, it, it comes down to the simplest thing of worshiping God when you're, you know, do it all for the glory of God. I read an article one time, it says, how can I glorify God in the in, in drinking orange juice, okay? It's, it's a kind of a funny concept, but the idea is, is you take make it a conscious effort to glorify God in everything you do. I, glory, I drink orange juice for the glory of God because I'm, I'm praising God for the fact that oranges grow on trees, the, that it's, the vitamin C is nourishment for my body, all these various things. So we can, we can do all these things glorifying God and doing all things for the glory of God is, in a sense, essentially doing all things to, in worship to God. So, again, worship is not taking, taking a 20 minutes out in church to sing songs to make yourself feel good. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that those things make us feel good, but that is not the point. Okay, the point is for us to seek to glorify God. Because you could go to church and sit in a worship service and feel absolutely miserable. And the music wouldn't even do you any good. The point is, is that worship is not about how we feel. Now, we, the feeling and the experience is a is a byproduct of our worship, but that's not that is not our motivation. I'm not going to church to a worship service so I can be made to feel better, so I can be made to be excited. Now, again, those things happen in the midst of our worship of God, but it's a byproduct. It's not it's not the the end all be all. It is I need to, to be able to go and worship God even if I don't have those feelings, even if I don't have that experience. I want to say, Lord, even though I'm not I'm not feeling what I would like to feel, I offer myself a living sacrifice in worship to you. Now, I think that the byproducts of worship are the experience and are the feelings for sure. And I think that if we're, we're sincerely, again, living this, this, this life of sacrifice, that those byproducts will happen. You know, the, the joy will, will show up. But, but we can't use those as our motivation. We cannot put worship in a box of music or, or a program or this or that worship needs to be from from the moment I set my feet on the floor to go about my day in the midst of everything I do with this idea this acknowledgement that that God and his presence are there always and and everything I do needs to be in the the attitude of worship so now I know this this was this was kind of a brief Kind of interlude to to my regular weekly stuff, but I, I I really believe that that worship needs to be so much more than this. I go to sing a song, I go to have an experience, because again, we're putting ourselves in the forefront, we're putting ourselves in the in the seat of this is this is why I go because I want to get something out of it, like. People will say, well, I, I don't go to church as much because I just, I stopped getting anything out of it. I stopped receiving. I stopped being fed. I stopped this. I don't feel it anymore. These are all things that we're putting ourselves first. The Bible calls us to have fellowship one with another. Now, I get it. There's churches that you, you, you don't or choose not to affiliate with because of certain disagreements or, or what have you that's not that's not the point the point is is we got to stop making excuses by putting ourselves in the number one seat I, I offer myself as a sacrifice as a living sacrifice to God 
and allow him to lead and guide me into whatever direction he wants me to go, first of all, but to do it in spite of how I feel, in spite of whether or not I'm getting th anything out of it, in spite of whether or not I'm being fed. Okay, my worship to God must be a denying of myself anyway, so the thought that whether or not I get anything out of it should be the farthest from my mind because I'm denying myself. Now it's not to say you're not going to get fed and, and this and that, but, but the, the emphasis needs to be on what I'm giving, what I'm, what I'm setting forth to Christ for his use. Okay, thank you. Again, it was brief. It was, it was kind of uh, off the off the, the road a little bit, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to touch on that topic this morning. It was something I kind of thought about last night. Um, so there will be a video coming out tomorrow, uh, my weekly weekly video, and then uh, stay tuned for next week's. So I hope again I hope these these messages bless you. I hope they they find you. Just in a in a good place. I, I I hope they fed you, even even though we don't want to be looking on ourselves. But I, I pray this encourages you. Um, thank you, and and God bless.